For thousands of years, uh, the Jewish people were looking for a Messiah to come. They, they had great plans about what he would be like, and there were lots of prophecies that gave them indications of what to look for. They were looking for a prophet like Moses and a king like David, and, and they knew where he'd be born, and they knew uh, what, he would, what he would do, how he would come into Jerusalem. There were so many exact predictions about what this Messiah would be, and yet, and yet most of them missed it. And there were reasons there were reasons uh, why they did. Uh, a lot of people missed Jesus because they thought that Jesus would be, uh, would be more commanding. Some of them missed Jesus because they thought that he would uh, uh, build alliances and do things politicians do, you know, would, would be building an empire of sorts. Some of them missed it uh, because they thought that uh, Jesus would, I don't know, uh, be more exclusive just to the Jews and, 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 and not be as open as he was to, to, to Samaritans and to people who were outside of, uh, to, to the Romans even. And I thought they thought, they think they believed that, that the Messiah, when he came, would be big. And Jesus doesn't come big. In fact, he comes, he comes small. And, and I think that surprised a lot of the the experts. I think it surprised a lot of the religious people. The Messiah that they were hoping would come, the, the visions they had in their head, Jesus just didn't come that way. Now, incidentally, when you're thinking about a prophet like Moses, I mean, remember that Moses starts off kind of small, right? I mean, by the time he comes back to Egypt, he's been in the desert for 40 years. He's just a shepherd. And David, remember, came kind of Small, he becomes a king, but he's the least of all of his brothers. And, and, and Samuel, when he goes to anoint David, is surprised that God wouldn't choose one of David's older, uh, more impressive looking brothers. And Jesus, in that same tradition, comes small. And I think it surprises people. And maybe even today, when we link about the Christmas story, we, we miss that aspect of it. And we miss how, how small it would have been. It says in those days that, that Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census would go out through the whole Roman world. And this was the first census that was taken when Quirinius was, uh, was the governor of Syria. And so everyone went to their own town to register. And this Quirinius, we, we have records about him. We know when he was in charge there in Syria from archaeology. And, and from no one too when King Herod uh, was there. Matthew talks about King Herod being there. We're able to pinpoint pretty closely when, when Jesus would have came. And it, and it would have been between uh, 6 and 4 BC. Uh, right, right in there, almost for sure, is when Jesus would have came. And it was a historical time. It mentions real people like Caesar. Uh, Caesar, at the time that Luke was written, uh, or certainly at the time of this, what Luke's describing here, uh, was the most important man in the world. When he was born, uh, people talked about a, a, a day of good news that would bring great joy. A, and that Caesar, as one of his chief accomplishments as, as the emperor of the entire world, was to bring a peace, a Roman peace, that, that was enforced through a sword and, uh, and would allow people to travel. Uh, and, and this Caesar, who can do whatever he wants to do, issues a decree uh, that people will go and, and register. And so it's in that moment that Joseph also goes up from Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem. Now Bethlehem uh, in Micah uh, is supposed to be, Micah 5.2 is supposed to be where the Messiah is supposed to come from. And it's, it's in Bethlehem, uh, David's hometown, that, that the son of David will come and, and rule. And Joseph goes there because he's told by the emperor of the world. And God foresaw that, or God uh, leads uh, Caesar to act the way he does because it's all in God's hands. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in cloths, and she placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for him. Now, there's, a, there's several things here that, that we pull tradition from, but, but it may not be exactly how we think. Uh, we pull tradition that, that Joseph and Mary are, are coming into town right at the very last second. 
you know, Mary's about to have a baby and they get there and there's no, there's no rooms. And if you've ever had that experience, go into a, you may on vacation and you go into a town, you didn't get reservations ahead of time and no hotel can put you up. And, and sometimes in modern tellings of that, that's what this is like. And it may or may not have been that way. They might have been in Bethlehem for some time before the baby comes. But whatever happened, when the baby comes, uh, the, the people who owned the, the inn or the people who owned a guest room said, well, you're not doing that here. And so when Jesus is born, they had to do whatever they could. And it mentions a, a manger here, an animal trough where they went and, uh, and had their, their baby. And that might have been in a stable or it might have been in a cave. It might have been kind of outside, you know, just a very little bit of shelter for them to get. But they just did what they had to do. They're, they're completely homeless, completely uh, at the mercy of, of whatever God will do. And this is how Jesus came into the world. He, he came, came small. And I don't think that's what Mary probably had in mind, or Joseph, either one. That I mean, they had heard the prophecies made about Jesus, and, and they had seen the angel and, and, and knew what, what God had predicted. And I, I would imagine they too were kind of surprised. God, what's, what's going on? Well, at this very moment, while they're there, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, and they're keeping watch over their flocks at night. Bethlehem is just a few miles from Jerusalem, and, and, and it's likely that the, the sheep that are being watched here in, in, in Bethlehem would be sheep that would eventually, uh, some of them be sacrificed even in the temple there in Jerusalem. And these shepherds, they're full time, right? I mean, they're just making sure the sheep are kept safe. They're making sure that the sheep aren't, there's no predators coming in there, and, and they're there at night. And shepherding, even though Moses and David were both uh, shepherds, it wasn't seen as a, a high level job at all. It was kind of low of repute. I mean, you're almost certainly unclean if you were working as a shepherd, dealing with dead animals occasionally or, or dealing with things you shouldn't. And, and, and these guys, you know, the lowest rung, uh, an angel appears to them. I mean, what a powerful thing, you know? God goes and sends an invitation to the shepherds. And it says they were terrified, which is the normal reaction people always have, it seems like, when they see angels. It's always very frightening, uh, scripturally speaking. But the angel said, don't be afraid. I'm bringing you good news that will cause great joy for all people. And like I said, this was the kind of thing they, they introduced uh, Emperor uh, Augustus Caesar with. You know, he was good news for the people. And, and this, this phrase here is the, where we get the phrase gospel. It, it's the... A, a, a new story is getting ready to be told. And it's the best news you ever heard that, 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 that there's a Messiah, a Savior born for you. Uh, a Savior means He's going to come and rescue. And maybe they would have thought, the shepherds, that it would be a rescue from the Romans. But, but we know from the rest of Scripture and from Jesus' own testimony that it was a, a rescue from sin. He's the Messiah uh, means the anointed one. Uh, you could read that a couple different ways, that, that, that God anointed him to be king. That's normally how it was done. Or that he was anointed with God's spirit in a very powerful way. Uh, the Messiah was the one that God would anoint who would come to be the leader of, uh, of everything. And he's also Lord. He's the boss. He's in charge. And the shepherds probably didn't understand all of those things and what they meant. They said, here's the sign for you. You'll find this baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. So, so the sign, right, is the combination of all of it. It's, it's not just the kid in the manger. It's, it's all of it, right? The angel appearing. And, and, and we came to you guys and we told you exactly what was going on. And when you go to look for this great king of the universe, you're going to find him in the straw. You're going to find him small. And not that important. It's not going to go exactly the way that you think it's going to go. It's not going to be exactly the way you think it'll be. Now, now, even though this was kind of a poor area, I mean, to see a baby in an animal trough was, was still pretty remarkable. You know, we've been uh, trying to do a ministry as a church where we're taking beds to different people. And it, and it can surprise, you know, well, surely everybody's got a bed, but not everybody's got a bed. Not everybody's got a bed. Some people, for whatever reason, aren't able to do it right now. And that's the family that Jesus came up in. He wasn't able to have what everybody else has. He wasn't able to, to, to enjoy some of the privileges that other people were able to enjoy. 
he comes, he comes small. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, and they're praising God, and they're saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom His favor rests. Uh, two things. This first part, glory to God in the highest, uh, is in Latin, gloria in excelsis Deo, which, which we, the song, right, the Christmas song. And, and we, we sing gloria to God in excelsis Deo, glory to God in the highest, that, that, that you're worthy God of the very most praise, you're worthy God of the very most uh, attention and, and worship. And that's what the angels are singing. They're all out there singing this, this, this message about what God has done and what God is going to do. And, and again, a promise that if you will stay true to God and stay true to this plan, which may not go like you think it's going to go, which may come a lot smaller and a lot slower I mean, than you think. When they get to see the baby, he's not ready to lead an army. And he's not ready to save anybody. He'll just be a baby. So all you're seeing here is that the, the clock has started, right? It's not the end of the plan. It's the beginning. Jesus has come, and now it's going to work out. But you're going to have to wait, and you're going to have to see it in God's time. Well, the shepherds, of course, they're all blown away by this thing. They say, let's go to Bethlehem and see what the angels have told us about. And so they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby, and the baby's lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, right, they spread the word concerning uh, what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. The shepherds, again, the lowest rung, right, the, 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 the bottom rung, in the middle of the night, right? Uh, they're watching their flocks at night when this message comes. In the middle of the night, they, they go into town, they see the baby, and they're so blown away by this thing that they got to wake everybody up and tell them. Well, what is it that they're blown away by? Again, Jesus isn't in any shape uh, to be able to do anything yet. He's a baby in a, in a manger, but, but it's proof, right? Just like the angel said, it's like it's, like it's already started. The clock is already ticking. I mean, these shepherds see the baby there, and God is already making good on this promise. We're not seeing all of it yet, but it's, it's proof that God is going to do what God said He was going to do. I've heard it talked about uh, like when you see in World War II at, at, at Normandy, when, when, when the Allies were able to get a little bit of a beachhead there. On, on the shores of France, it was thought by most of the experts in the war, really on both sides, that now it's just a matter of time until Germany loses. Really, all they had was that little beachhead, but because they had the beachhead, it's just a matter of time. You know, the yeast is in the dough, and it's starting to rise, and it's just a matter of time before something good's going to happen. You just got to wait for it. It's already set up. It can't really go wrong. It just... It's just going to take some time. And when the shepherds see that, they're just so blown away by it that they wake everybody up in town. And so you put yourself in the shoes of the, or the sandals of the people getting woke up. You know, it's, it's the middle of the night and there's somebody knocking on your door and they're dressed pretty rough and they're dressed pretty ragged and they're the lowest uh, common denominator in your community. And you got to get up. We just saw a baby in a manger. Isn't that awesome? You're probably not that impressed. You're probably not that impressed. It, it, it maybe, maybe when you see it, they're not just waking you up, but they're waking everybody up. It kind of hits you. Man, what's going on? Yeah, you got to go see it, they said. You just got to come see it. God talked to us in the, in the field, and there were angels, and he told us about a baby in a manger. You just got to go see it. And I bet some people d did not go see it. I mean, they were, they were amazed, but they're amazed the way you'd be amazed if you're woke up in the middle of the night. You're kind of rattled and startled, and let's just go back to bed. But I bet some of them went and looked, and they, and they visited that first nativity, and they, and they saw a scared mom and a scared dad and a little baby in a manger, and they wondered, what's God up to? And Mary, it tells us, just treasured all these things up in her heart. I mean, it just it, 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 it said something to her. Though she didn't really reflect a lot on it, she just thought about it. She didn't say anything, she just considered. But the shepherds returned, and they're glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And you picture, you know, these shepherds, and they're just, they're just workers, right? I mean, they're just guys going about their day and their job, and, and they're in the middle of the night shift. 
And the next morning, they, they go tell all their families. You can't believe what happened last night. How long until that, that fades? You know, sometimes we see a dream like that or see something amazing like that, and days later, we start talking ourselves out. Well, was it really what we thought it was? I wonder if they did that. People can do that. But I, I suspect that they never got tired of talking about it. I suspect that some of these guys kept an eye on Jesus. And when he shows up again in just a few years, they were able to say, you know, we were there when that all started. We saw it coming a long time off. I bet there were some who quickly got behind Jesus when he came back and quickly grabbed a hold of his message. And they weren't at all bothered that he came small. Uh, come however you want to, God. We just know that once you start, you're going to do great things. And that's what the Christmas story, at least in part, is about.